Thanks, Deb. Yes, we're in the WRTI Performance Studio. I'm here with Brad Rao, who is a guitarist who performs extensively around the tri-state area. He's developed a distinctive teaching style combining music, physics, philosophy, and humor, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, let's get to some music. The first piece, I understand, is Vals Venezuela by Antonio Lauro. If you're just joining us, I'm Susan Lewis in the WRTI Performance Studio with guitarist Brad Rao. Welcome. Thank you. And we are also streaming live on our website, so you can listen on air or go on our website and see the video. Brad, it's great to have you here. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. You've been playing guitar since you were 12. Yes. And what were your influences? How, how did you end up playing classical guitar? Um, well, I, my dad plays guitar. He's sort of a blues rock guitar player. So I've always been around guitar. I started on drums. Um, my dad and my uncle had a little band that we did. Um, and then uh, Nirvana came out in the 90s. And <laughs> I, of course, loved that. And I started with that kind of stuff. Um, and then when I was... Uh, about 15, I saw a classical guitar player, um, and I was just blown away, and I tried to figure it out by ear, and I ended up taking lessons, and here I am. Wow, so you played rock guitar, and you played drums. What was it about classical guitar that blew you away? Well, I, classical guitar for me um, has, uh, it's technically, physically, with the technique, the highest demanding. And then emotionally, I felt that it was the most moving. So it just seemed to me like it was just way beyond anything any other style was doing that I knew of at the time. Wow. It just, so it just touched you. Yes. Yeah. Right away, I was hooked. Could you describe the guitar you're playing today? This is a William Henderson guitar. Um, it's number 48. There's only 52 of them in the world. William Henderson is a maker in Baltimore. Um, so this is custom made just for me. Um, it's, a, it's a great guitar. I've had it for many years and it does me well. When you say custom made just for you, do you are you involved in the in the making of it? Yeah, well, I went down to his shop and I picked out different dimensions. I picked out the thickness of the neck and um, the, the type of woods that are going to be used. So I tried out different guitars and I was, I want this body, but I want this neck and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so yeah. cool. So it's very personal. Yes. Now, you were a semifinalist in the International Guitar Competition in 2008 yes. in Texas. Yes. And you went to New England Conservatory and got a master's in 2015. Yes. Um, I gather that guitar is a relative newcomer to conservatories. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think that 
classical guitar um, is really in its infancy if you compare it to violin or um, piano. Um, if you look at their history, they have long histories. They've kind of figured out how to do that. And I think that we're still, as a community, kind of still trying to figure out the correct way to play or the multiple correct ways of playing. Um, so it's a really exciting t to be a part of that. So people take different paths to in their careers. Yeah, I, that's, yeah, absolutely. Um, there really isn't a set way to uh, be a classical guitar player. And, today, and every day there's new opportunities with the Internet, so it's really exciting. It's an exciting time to be a musician. That's cool. Well, I understand the next piece is by a contemporary Russian composer based on a short story by Edgar Allan Poe. Yes, yeah, I'd love to read uh, the beginning of this here. During the whole of a dull, dark, soundless day in the autumn year, when the clouds hung oppressively low in the heavens, I have been passing along on horseback through the singularly dreary trek of country, at length found myself at the shades of the evening dew within view of the melancholy house of Usher. Okay. All right, so I'd love to play this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Getting caught up in that, as I was getting caught up in that, it's interesting. That was um, Usher Voss by Nikita Koshkin. Yes. A contemporary Russian composer. And you read a quote from an Edgar Allan Poe story right. beforehand. So what? how did that story inform the way you played that piece? Well, the piece itself is a is programmatically written um, by based off of the story, The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, and uh, if you know Edgar Allan Poe in general or the story, <laughs> um, it's, you know, very dark and sinister. Um, the piece is even marched at 66 beats per minute. So it's supposed it's a very evil kind of tone. Um, and uh so I think that that definitely, you know, um, and in the end, the climax of the story, the entire house falls apart. Um, so it's, you know, it's sort of an energetic kind of a, maybe even violent at some times. So when you're playing that, you your face, facial expression was kind of changing. And so are you thinking through that story? Yeah, um, I've I've done, I haven't had a one-to-one -one correlation, but I have studied the story and the piece pretty in depth and tried to match up where the different parts of the story happen in the song. Um, again, I don't know if it's a one-to-one -one correlation, but there's definitely moments that you can tell um, are supposed to be mellow or violent or dramatic or building up intensity. Right. Well, it's kind of an illustration of how music can often connect and express things that, that we experience in life. And you teach as well as perform. Um, you have a book called Practice, A Guide to Classical Guitar, which uh, your materials say express ideas of, quote, eliminating resistance to the immediate realization of any musical intention. What does that mean? Yeah, well, um, I think a lot of us hear music in our heads, um, but it's the hard part is kind of getting it out on paper or on an instrument or whatever your medium is. So what I've tried to do is develop a system where all of the things that slow down the process of learning music, I've tried to get rid of them all. So it's just the intention and then the reality can manifest. Um, like, for example, like technique. If your technique is slow, that's going to limit your ability. If your understanding of music theory is limited, that's going to limit your ability to make the connection between what you want to do and what you're going to do. So that's how I practice and I try to teach is to get rid of those boundaries so that you can be yourself musically. Wow. So the next piece is from your new CD uh, called Guitar Night. Mm -hmm. And I understand it's jazz and South American style lines you said this is one of the most emotionally moving pieces that you play. What What do you mean? Yes. Well, I've had uh, a number of my fans and students who listen to the album really have, you know, told me that they've had a lot of uh, intimate moments, you know, um, especially during the fall listening to that CD. Um, so I just really think that... Um, it, I like to have something that has a, a lot of emotional content um, and not just something where my fingers are moving around or I'm just kind of, you know, being very intense. So, so it, is the music itself creating the emotion or is it there's some extra musical association? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I think that, yeah, I mean, I think it's both of them. The piece itself definitely lends itself to sort of a mellow kind of vibe. Um, and then I try to bring that out as much as I can. Okay. So, so right. the piece is called Danza? Danza in E minor by Jorge Morel. Okay.
Beautiful. If you're just joining us, we're in the WRTI Performance Studio with guitarist Brad Rao. We're also streaming live uh, on a video on our website. Brad, um, we've heard today music by a Venezuelan composer, Russian composer, and our, that was Argentinian composer. Are you drawn to a certain repertoire? We talked earlier about how classical guitar repertoire is actually much broader than some people realize. Right. Well, a lot of people th seem to think that it's a limiting kind of style, but it really covers hundreds of years, everything from the Renaissance today, and music from all different countries. Um, I play music from Japan um, and uh, from almost every, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of different material. So there's a lot to choose from. There's a lot of variety, everything from fast to slow exciting, mellow, dramatic, um, <laughs> and I really, that's why I love it so much, you know, and it keeps me busy. And how do you find these pieces? Um, a lot of times listening to recordings, um, I, you know, I love to listen to John Williams, Julian Bream, um, and going to, you know, some of my teachers, uh, Elliot Fisk and Jason Vio, um, also, you know, I kind of see what they're playing. So there's a, you know, there's a never-ending amount, and then with YouTube, it's very easy to keep in touch with the new, the newest pieces and the or the trendiest pieces uh, that are coming in. With your background as a drummer and a rock musician, does that influence how you approach classical guitar? Absolutely, yeah. Um, being a drummer. Um, really gave me a, a great sense of rhythm. And I think one of the reasons I've been drawn to the South American music is the polyrhythms or the hemiolas, whatever, the complicated rhythms um, seem to be very natural for me um, as, a, as a drummer. So I think that, and then, uh, and, the, and being a rock musician too, I think, of course, because I try, rock is in energy, I think, most <laughs> more than anything else. And I try to, when appropriate, try to put that into my guitar playing as well. So earlier today, before we went on, you were talking about your fondness for Bach. Yes, um, more like an unhealthy obsession. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Um, anyone who knows me, I have I have a hoodie that has a, a Bach hoodie, um, and I'm always talking about Bach. I think he's uh, one of the most amazing musicians, um, and I think his music is one of mankind's greatest achievements. Um, Bach's music for me is uh, some of the most intellectually stimulating, but also some of the most emotionally uh, music that you can that I think I've ever heard. Um, so it's really exciting to play it and to study it. I've never gotten to the bottom of a Bach piece. Every time I play it or look at it, I see something new, very much like a Monty Python movie. <laughs> <laughs> so describe the next piece you're playing. So us. this next piece is. Um, was originally written on cello, and then Bach arranged it for lute, and now I'm going to play it on guitar. So um, it's a fugue um, that he that he wrote. Um, a fugue is where there's a subject that is moved around in different keys, and then they take the melody and break it up. Um, so it's a very exciting piece, um, kind of asymmetrical, um, and one of my one of my favorites. Great.
that Bach fugue sounded great on the guitar. <laughs> Brad, does Bach have anything to do with your teaching style, which has been described as combining music, physics, philosophy, and humor? Um, yeah, I would say I think that Bach... People find, uh, when people look at Bach, they find all kinds of things. I've heard people say there's fractals in Bach, and there's math, and there's emotion, there's numbers, numerology. Um, so I think that when you uh, study Bach, you really see yourself. Um, and, what, you know, and something that I try to do in my teaching is incorporate a lot of different kind of things. I'm, I try to be a Renaissance man, so if I can take different ideas that are not related to music and apply them to music, I think that can make things uh, very interesting. Um, For example? Um, well, the one example um, is uh, I got a book by Bruce Lee called The Tao of Jeet Kune Do. Now, Bruce Lee is a martial artist, and I am definitely not a martial artist. Um, I love to watch the movies. But he, there's a quote from this book where he says, Consciousness of the self is the greatest hindrance to all physical activities. And I think that definitely applies to playing music just as much as martial arts. Um, and there's a number of other quotes in that book that actually directly apply to music word for word some of them you have to take out martial arts and put in guitar but a lot of them <laughs> but that one for example and i think that when you're playing music being too self-aware you can get in front of you can block yourself um so so you have to get in the zone yes exactly yeah um so bruce lee has been one of the people who's helped me be able to do that well that's great well thanks so much brad for coming and sharing your music with us at WRTI. Your upcoming shows include uh, a performance at Kennet, Kennet Flash on April 14th. Yes. And the Pharmacy in Philadelphia on June 15th. Mm -hmm. And you can check out Brad's complete schedule on his website, which is Brad Rao. BradRaoMusic.com. BradRaoMusic.com. And do these programs, do these concerts have any particular program? Um, well, I like to kind of uh, see how it goes. I, I, I tried not to do programs too much. Programs are for robots is sort of how <laughs> I, I see it. I have enough music where I like to kind of see what's the best piece at during the time or, you know, what kind of mood we're in or maybe read the crowd. And if I play a slow piece and it doesn't go so well, I'll favor more fast pieces or vice versa. So it depends on the weather and my mood and the mood of the audience. So very kind of interactive with the audience. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming in to WRTI's performance studio. We've loved having you and uh, good luck with your next projects. Thank you.